Hello. Today we're going to look at gate 18, uh, which is uh, one of the yeah, most fascinating gates, actually. I have it as part of my definition, this gate of working on what has been spoiled, this, this gate of correcting, this gate of uh, you know, the fear of authority and the challenge of authority. I mean, we, we come to a place, if you look at this gate uh, and, the, and the previous gate, 17, they, they are next to each other and, and they are a polarity. It's interesting to see because there are a few places in the lineup of the gates where that such a thing happens. But to remember, gate 18 as a polarity of gate 17 that was all about organizing society, you know, and, and obviously organizing a society where we, are, we can all live together as human beings and we can all be in the flow together, you know, the movie. Gate 18, you know, it, it cannot, it's, an, it's a now gate. It cannot wait for that future, you know. So this is not the theory of equality, you know. This is the praxis of it, moment by moment. You know, equality in relationships now is such a thing even possible. And whether you talk about the equality between man and woman, or you talk the equal value that is being preached in Gate 17, that is given as an opinion, you know, whether that equal value is true, to, you know, if the child has the right to decide for himself as much as the parents have a right to decide for themselves at least what they like and what they don't like. If there is space in the house and understanding enough to accept that we don't like the same, that's not a problem cannot be a personal problem. That what the, what the parents like, the child does not like. If you think of what I said about gate 16 and how inadequate it feels when what it expresses at it as its taste is not liked by others, how personally the not-self takes those things, you can imagine the deep tensions that emerge the moment we live together or we are together in the aura and one is enthusiastic about something that they like and the other one starts contracting and like going, ugh. There is tension that is there as a potential. Now this tension, when it is lived out through the not-self, it brings about this deep, deep criticism and dissatisfaction that is so characteristic for the shadow of gate 18, particularly, you know, when integrated in, uh, in, the, in the defined channel. But even as an open gate, this is its job to judge what is correct and what isn't correct. And when this is done mentally, it becomes an absolute distortion because the aim is for perfection in the results. The aim is that we are already there in that future. We already feel great in the now. And of course, such a thing is not always necessarily possible. You know, this is a, a, a projector a gate that is part of a projected channel, and it is not even pointing towards the throat. It is not about judging what we can do now. It is about judging what may be possible to correct at some point, somehow, where there may be some potential for correction, you know, where some space can be created for the taste of the child for the taste of the parent, even though the roles do not necessarily get confused and nobody manages to spoil the other by imposing their taste on them. Because it is in that early relationship with our parents that all our relationship with our own authority gets spoiled. This is the gate where the complex of Electra and Oedipus is rooted and it is based on this very complex that we develop, you know, our moral values about life, what is legal and what is crime. What is, uh, you know, something that you can express enthusiastically and be proud about. And what is something that, you know, deserves deep, deep, deep disapproval. And this is going to be the base, you know, of all judgments that emerge of gate 18. Working on what is being spoiled in your understanding in the end working on your conditioning. Mm -hmm.